Right then, I know that technically I'm a little late to the party, but to be frank, it's taken me this long to admit that perhaps I didn't do a good enough job reviewing Gears of War 2 the first time round. So, given that Christmas is a period of love and forgiveness, why don't we just put the past behind us and give it another bash, eh? Now, Gears of War 2 became one of the most anticipated games to come out in 2008 from the very second that this um, interesting man, Cliff Blazinski, announced it. What's up, guys? So, now the game is out and Cliffy's put his Lancer down for the moment, let's see what kind of a job Epic did. The gameplay is much the same brand of slick pop cover fighting that made the first such a success, but there are a few refinements and additions keeping it fresh and satisfying. For instance, there's the meat shield, allowing you to use a downed locust soldier as cover before you tire of him and break his putrid neck. The Unreal 3 engine's capabilities allow a lot more characters to be on screen at once, meaning for the first time you actually feel like you're in a war rather than a series of skirmishes. It's a very strange thing to catch yourself thinking there's too many of them while playing a Gears title, but it happens surprisingly often in the second. In general, Gears of War 2 is much more accomplished than its predecessor, and you get the feeling that a lot of the stuff Epic were burning to do in the first title has finally been pulled off. It's been said a lot recently that games are growing to be much more epic cinematic experiences, but it's doubtful many people truly bought into that. However, after playing Gears 2, it has to be said that those people have a point. The storyline of Gears 2 is more engaging than almost any video game I've ever played, and is pulled off with a mixture of seriousness and light-hearted humour other titles flat out fail to provide. Of course, this step up wouldn't have been possible without a few advancements in game development. For one thing, the visuals are vastly superior. Environments are more detailed, better rendered, and generally speaking, much better conceived. The character animation is even smoother than the first, minimising the number of odd-looking glitchy parts from Gears of War 1. And talking of fixing glitches, fans of multiplayer from the first will be pleased to know that characters are now vulnerable during manoeuvres such as rolls and animations like chainsawing. This will finally put a stop to those annoying people rolling around constantly before blasting your face off point-blank with a shotgun. There's also an array of interesting new locusts to blow to pieces, from multiple kinds of boomer to alarmingly cute explodey fellows called tickers. Achievements have been helped along considerably by the addition of a progress bar, turning them into a real obsession. In particular, there's one called Variety is the Spice of Death, which you get after making a kill with every weapon in the game. It's great fun and encourages gamers to stop relying on just two staple weapons like the Lancer and the Shotgun, which admittedly I myself was prone to do. The weapons roster has also been significantly expanded, introducing two new types of grenade, a flamethrower, mortars and miniguns. <laughs> you know how to call to a baby. The bigger they are, the better to kill. The annoying burst fire locust rifle has also been done away with, replacing it with a high powered carbine. For the first time in Gears of War, each weapon can truly stand up for itself, meaning that some of the more exotic guns are no longer just stop gaps between finding better kit. So, ultimately, as expected, Gears of War 2 is an absolute triumph, fully deserving of its nomination to be our game of the year 2008. You know it. Keep your eyes peeled this month to see whether or not it scoops the title. <laughs>